No, I think the designers should be doing more. Mm -hmm. I think they should be going out into industry and changing industry. They should be prepared to be salesmen and managing directors and not necessarily just designers. Well, he just had a workshop, so he started working on prototypes out there. But he was on his own for quite a long time before he started getting the old person in to help him. Tony Camerata, who was the machinist working the lathe and the mill, and we had Adam building up the prototypes and models. And Pete, upstairs, and another draftsman were drawing things on computers by this time. We were 2D on computers. First book. September 89, I went into the coach house, and it was sort of quite a magical place back then, you know, because you went up a spiral staircase. There was a little workshop at the bottom. The coach house had got a little bit smarter. There were carpets, I think, upstairs and heating. Um, <laughs> but there were, everybody was very busy. Everybody knew exactly what they were doing. What I would say is from day one, it was pretty much intensive draw-up designs. You'd get a prototype made downstairs in the workshop. So if you phone up downstairs, they'd say, engine room, you know, and they'd be making all the models down there. And we'd be handing the drawings and they'd be making the bits. And then maybe at the end of the day, we'd go down and sort of help out working on the models in the evenings as well sometimes. And we hadn't got a salesman, we hadn't got a production manager. We had none of the structure and organisation that you have when you set about manufacturing something. We were merely a group of engineers developing a product at this stage. We did do a couple of others. We did a backpack and then we did a lightweight pencil back. And then we started working on a cylinder. And we set about designing and developing what is now known as DC01. We made a model of this design, actually, which is what we sort of then based DC01 on. And this is the one we decided to do. So I was sent off down to uh, Italy with a computer. Instead of being there for two weeks, I was there for about two months, I think, in the end, frantically sort of trying to get it all finished. We have a vacuum cleaner. We have a factory in which to make it. We don't have any money for stock. We don't have any money for advertising. We don't have any customers. I can remember the day when we actually made 100 machines, and that was sort of like a big sort of threshold to to get to, whereas, you know, we make over half a million machines a week at the moment. You know, seeing them all lined up, all these machines on a big assembly line, you know, a small team of two or three people had achieved a full-on production line. It was incredible. The first retail chain we got into was Rumbelows. And they said, we won't take you because you're not advertising on television, so why should we stop? a product that nobody knows of, from a name that no one has ever heard of, if you're not going to spend money on television advertising. So I said, well, for every 2,000 machines you order, I'll spend £20,000 on television. The new Dyson has no bag, so you get 100% of the power 100% of the time. And we got into Comet, and then because we are in Comet, Curry's had to take us, and because we were in Curry's and Comet, Argos had to take us. So finally, we were in the big time in England.